Hello, my name is Don Deal, and this session will walk through several open source tools that can help you develop a Swordfish implementation. First, I'll cover some open source tools made available by SNIA. Then I'll cover a few more open source tools made available by others. After that, I'll talk about the SNIA Swordfish Conformance Testing Program and its relationship to open source. Finally, I'll tell you where to find more information about Swordfish, Redfish, and a couple of industry efforts that are using Swordfish. This section will cover Swordfish open source tools made available by SNIA. SNIA developed Swordfish as an extension for Redfish and Swordfish deals with enterprise storage. SNIA has also developed several open source tools that can help anyone working on a Swordfish implementation. All the SNIA open source tools are made publicly available on GitHub. The SNIA open source tools include an emulator that can mimic an intended Swordfish implementation before that implementation even exists, a basic web client that can talk to the emulator or a Swordfish implementation, a PowerShell toolkit that can simplify accessing Swordfish implementation from the emulator or a Swordfish implementation. And there are also two sample dashboard integrations with well-known monitoring products. Before taking a closer look at the SNIA open source tools, however, let's take a brief look at a tool called a mockup. A mockup is a point in time representation of the information a Swordfish implementation can make available or control. A mockup should be as complete as possible. It establishes what the Swordfish implementation needs to be able to do, and it also informs the developers about what needs to be done. Swordfishmockups.com provides examples of multiple storage system mockups. Each mockup on the site includes a brief description. Note, these mockups really only show representations of implementations. They are not normative. If you need to know exactly what's in the standard, then you need to go to the Swordfish specification for normative statements. The mockups on swordfishmockups.com can be accessed as if they are read-only Swordfish implementations. This example shows the NVMe OF mockups service route. You can access this information with a regular browser, but you'll need a JSON viewing plugin to be able to read the output easily. It still works without a JSON viewing plugin, but what you'll see is a jumble of unformatted JSON. You can also access the mockups on swordfishmockups.com with a normal REST client. When they are kept on disk, mockups are stored as hierarchical structures where each directory corresponds to a redfish or swordfish object. A file named index.json in each directory describes the state elements for the object. The topmost directory in the directory tree represents the service root and the directory structure reflects the redfish and swordfish hierarchy. This approach for storing mockups comes is in use for working with some of the open source tools like the emulator. This approach is also used for discussing possible changes for Redfish and Swordfish in the organizations that have developed those standards. The first open source tool that I'll talk about today is the Swordfish API emulator. The Swordfish API emulator can mimic a target Swordfish implementation before the real Swordfish implementation exists. It provides a way for developers to bring a mockup for a target Swordfish implementation to life. This allows developers to confirm that the approach they are pursuing provides the desired results. It also supports the parallel development of a possible Swordfish client software package. The Swordfish API emulator extends the DMTF Redfish interface emulator in much the same way that the Swordfish specification extends the Redfish specification. The screen capture shown here shows the 
Swordfish API emulator starting up in its default configuration. The Swordfish API emulator has started and is ready to respond to incoming REST operation requests on port 5000 of localhost. This screen capture shows a normal browser with a JSON viewing plugin displaying the service route for the default configuration of the Swordfish API emulator. The output has been turned into two columns on this slide to fit on, on the slide. On screen, it's all one continuous column. This slide depicts, a, it's a block diagram of how the main pieces of the Swordfish API emulator work. Um, the Swordfish API emulator extends the Redfish interface emulator, which uses Flask and Flask RESTful. The red boxes here are for Redfish and the blue boxes show where Swordfish elements are. Emulator.py starts everything. ResourceManager.py loads static resources, which are read-only mockups, and registers their URIs with Flask and Flask Redsful. ResourceManager.py then enables dynamic resources, which come in API template file pairs by registering their URIs with Flask and Flask Restful. Dynamic resources respond to create, read, update, and delete operations defined in the api.py files. New dynamic resources instances can be created within the emulator using the template file shown on the right-hand side of the slide. When new dynamic resources are created, their URIs are also registered with Flask and Flask RESTful. If you'd like a little more detail about this, download these presentation slides and you'll find a few extra slides at the end that will talk about some of the details behind how the emulator works and how you use it. The next SNEA open source tool is a basic web client that can talk to the emulator or a Swordfish implementation. The Swordfish basic web client is a client application that connects to multiple sim emulators or Swordfish service implementations at the same time. It works with a SNEA Swordfish API emulator, providing a simpler alternative to using a REST client for viewing and updating object properties that are writable. It can also be used to see how well the emulator is tracking the mockup of the intended Swordfish implementation. In other words, a Swordfish basic web client provides an easy way to take a first look at what your emulator is doing. This screen capture shows how a user can log into a Swordfish service. Users use a browser to connect to the Swordfish basic web client or the system it's running on, and they use the IP address of the system it is running on and usually port 3000 as is shown here. Once connected, users can click on the add button next to where it says Swordfish service on the upper left, and then specify login credentials for an emulator or a Swordfish service. The Swordfish basic web client will then attempt to use that information when the final add button on the bottom right is clicked. This screen capture shows what the Swordfish basic web client displays when it first logs into a Swordfish service. Once logged into an emulator or a Swordfish service, the basic web client displays the service route in a new panel. The name of the emulator or sword, Swordfish service is shown highlighted in the Swordfish service column. If desired, the user can log into another emulator or Swordfish service at the same time by clicking on the add button next to where it says Swordfish service. When this is done, information for only one Swordfish service will be shown at a time, and the name of the selected Swordfish service will be highlighted as shown. This screen capture shows how the user can dig down into the Redfish and Swordfish hierarchy by clicking on entries that have a right-facing carrot. In this case, Storage Services has been selected, and the result is shown in a new panel on the right, which shows three storage services called 1, 2, and AFF-1. As the user digs down into the hierarchy, more new panels are created on the right, 
and older panels will slide off to the left. The user can quickly return to a previous point in the hierarchy by clicking on the item shown to the right of the Swordfish logo near the top. Clicking on the name of the Swordfish service next to the Swordfish logo, for instance, will return to the service route. All panels to the right will disappear. The next SNEA open source tool is a PowerShell toolkit that can simplify accessing Swordfish implementation from an emulator or a Swordfish implementation. The Swordfish PowerShell Toolkit is a basic and flexible programming framework for querying a Swordfish service. It is supported on Microsoft Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and it works with the emulator, a Swordfish service, or even the mockups on swordfishmockups.com. It is a PowerShell wrapper for REST API calls that access information in a Swordfish service. This screen capture shows the commandlet connect-swordfish target being used to access to, to connect to a swordfish service on port 5000 of localhost. The object returned is the service root object for this swordfish service. And this screen capture shows the commandlet connect-swordfish mockup being used to connect to a swordfish mockup. The object returned is again the service root of the Swordfish mockup. One of the attractions for working with PowerShell is that everything is returned as objects, and those objects can contain nested objects. Objects can be cast to variable, like dollar my vols being set to the result of the commandlet get swordfish volume. You can then access things within dollar my vols, like an array or by piping dollar my vols through a filter. You can also dig deeper into single values. Dollar my vols 4.status is shown here with state enabled and health okay. This screen capture shows that PowerShell variables can even be cast back to JSON format by piping them to the commandlet convert to dash JSON. This is the current list of Swordfish PowerShell toolkit commandlets, but the list is growing. All the commandlets follow the usual pattern of verb dash noun. There are a couple of commandlets for connecting to a Swordfish service or a Swordfish mockup. The rest are some um, commandlets for accessing different types of information found in Swordfish services. All return objects that can be used programmatically. The next SNEA open source tool is a sample dashboard integration for Datadog. The Swordfish Datadog sample dashboard integration provides an example plugin for the Datadog monitoring service. It allows Datadog to connect to a Swordfish service and display storage system capacity information and the available storage capacity thresholds. It is meant to serve as a starting point for creating Datadog plugins that have been customized for different situations. This screen capture shows output from a running service Swordfish Datadog sample dashboard integration. It provides a quick visual picture of the current storage system capacity and the available storage capacity thresholds. The next SNEA open source tool is a sample dashboard integration for Power BI. The Swordfish Power BI sample dashboard integration provides an example plugin for the Power BI monitoring system. It allows Power BI to connect to a Swordfish service and display storage system capacity information and the available storage capacity thresholds. Like the Swordfish Datadog sample dashboard integration, it is meant to serve as a starting point for creating Power BI plugins that have been customized for different situations. This screen capture shows the main dashboard output from a running Swordfish Power BI sample dashboard integration. It provides a quick visual picture of the current Swordfish storage systems and the storage pools provided by them. In this case, there are four Swordfish storage systems and they are providing nine different storage pools. 
the percentage of capacity consumed and remaining is shown for each of the storage pools. More information can be obtained about individuals Swordfish storage services by clicking on the navigation link shown to the right of each Swordfish service name at the top here. Clicking on the storage service slash one link, for instance, will go to a child dashboard for that Swordfish storage service. This screen capture shows a child dashboard from a running Swordfish Power BI sample dashboard integration. It provides a quick visual picture of the volumes and storage pools provided by the storage service slash one swordfish storage service. In this case, storage service slash one has five volumes and two storage pools. The percentage of capacity consumed and remaining is shown for each volume and each storage pool. Clicking on the back button at the top left will take the user back to the swordfish main dashboard. This next section will cover Swordfish open source tools made available by organizations or individuals outside of the SNIA. The DMTF makes several useful open source tools available on GitHub. I'll cover that in a little bit more detail on the next slide. Fishem is a new early stage emulator that quickly brings any Swordfish or Redfish mockup to life. I'll talk about it in a little more detail too in a couple of following slides. Golang users will be interested in GoFish, which is a Golang client library for interfacing with Swordfish and Redfish implementations. There's a front end client for the Swordfish stack written in Ember.js, and it's called the Swordfish Ember client. The Open Fabrics Alliance project is shown here because it is using. It's an industry effort using mockups and the Swordfish API emulator for development. Working with mockups and an emulator really does help emulate developers better understand what their implementations need to do. The DMTF developed Redfish, and it has also developed several very useful open source tools that can help Swordfish implementation developers. A small sampling of these tools is shown here. The Redfish mockup creator can create mockups from Swordfish services or Redfish services for that matter. The rest of traffic it generates can also help with the initial bring up of an emulator running a mockup of the Swordfish implementation you are developing. It generates a lot of traffic really fast and it, and it lets you know that the right, the, the proper returns are being given. The Redfish Interface Emulator provides a foundation for the Swordfish API Emulator, as I talked about before. The Redfish Tackle Box project provides a set of Python utilities for performing common management operations on a Redfish or a Swordfish service. There are also libraries from the DMTF for Python and C that allow your programs to interact with Redfish and Swordfish services. You can find these open source tools and many more on the DMTF's homepage on GitHub. As I mentioned before, Fishem is a new early stage emulator that quickly brings any Swordfish or Redfish mockup to life. It reads in your Swordfish mockup to set the initial state of the emulator, and then it immediately starts responding to the allowed REST operations supported by the Swordfish objects involved. It's actually the Swordfish and Redfish objects. Note that Fishum does not do any checking of the input mockup. That's a mixed thing. On the one hand, it allows experimentation with things that are not yet defined by schema, but on the other hand, it means that the user must verify mockup correctness using other tools. In its default configuration, Fishum provides basic handling of get, put, post, patch, and delete operations for all. URI accessible objects that are defined by the Redfish and Swordfish schema. I want to emphasize that it's the allowed operations. It will reject anything that's not defined for a given object. All REST operations are handled by individual API modules for each Redfish or Swordfish object. And Fishum also provides basic handling of any action defined by Redfish and Swordfish schema. By basic, it, I mean it 
detects when an action has been requested. It responds with an HTTP response and it reports the action to the console. You can easily take the code farther because it's easy to find where each action is handled in an API code module and the code can be easily modified to implement the behavior requested by an action. The overall emulator state can change as Fisham handles incoming less traffic. This is normal for a Swordfish service. So Fisham is able to capture the final state of an emulator run as an output mockup. This is important because it allows an emulator run to be stopped with control C and then continued by restarting it with the output mockup as the new input mockup in a, a subsequent emulator run. So you can stop and then start the same run. This screen capture shows Fisham being started with an input mockup called NVMe OF mockups. After Fisham has loaded the input mockup, you can see here that it's, it loads the API modules that define behaviors for the objects and actions defined by Redfish and Swordfish schema. There are a lot of API modules because Fisham tries to work with any Redfish or Swordfish mockup. At the bottom of this particular screen capture, uh, it shows that Fisham has already handled a get operation on the service route at slash redfish slash v1. That's because a browser was used to access the service route. This screen capture shows the output from a browser that has done that. In this case, Fisham was started with an input mockup called NVMe OF mockups. Um, Note that the browser is using a JSON viewing plugin, which formats the JSON for readability. This section will talk about SNEA Swordfish conformance testing and its relationship with open source tools. The SNEA Storage Management Initiative runs a conformance testing program that offers a vendor neutral way for manufacturers to test products for conformance to SNEA storage management specifications. A new Swordfish conformance test program or Swordfish CTP validates that a Swordfish implementation conforms to a particular version of the Swordfish specification. The main goal of Swordfish CTP is to help ensure that Swordfish implementations will be interoperable with behaviors that are consistent with the defined Swordfish profiles. Swordfish CTP is based upon a framework that leverages common open source test tools that support the DMTF Redfish specification. Some of the open source tools used are shown at the bottom of this slide. Swordfish CTP, of course, includes several uh, extensions to cover storage specific use cases and to validate conformance to Swordfish profiles. By default, it uses a Swordfish implementation's features registry to determine which profiles to test. It can also be told to spe test specific Swordfish profiles. Companies with products that pass Swordfish CTP can be listed on the public SNEA website with the name of the product, the version of the test passed, and the hardware manageable by the tested product. Right now, the Swordfish version 1.2.2 CTP test suite is currently available for testing Swordfish enabled products. Next slide will show where to find more information about Swordfish, Redfish, and a couple of industry efforts that are using Swordfish. You can find more information about SNEA Swordfish at snea.org swordfish. The information available includes specs, schemas, mockups, guides, and more. The Swordfish Forum is a public arena where you can ask questions about Swordfish and get answers from experts. You can also learn much more about Swordfish by joining the SNEA Scalable Storage Management Technical Workgroup and helping to define future versions of the specification. Joining the SNEA Storage Management Initiative can help you interact directly with others who are developing and testing Swordfish implementations. The Storage Management Initiative has a lab program 
in addition to the Swordfish CTP program. You can find more information about the DMTF Redfish at dmtf.org slash redfish. The information includes specifications, mock-ups, and a whole lot more. The Open Fabric Management Framework and the NVM Express Group are industry efforts that are working with mock-ups and the Swordfish API emulator to define how to manage NVMe with Swordfish. You can find more information about these industry efforts at the links given. Thank you for joining. Please take a moment to rate this session. It is important to us and we do read and, and pay attention to what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you.